Okay, and we are live. We should be at least. Let me check. I always have to double check on YouTube because sometimes there's a delay. Okay, there's some people here, <laughs> apparently. Hello. Hello, everyone. Welcome. Uh, well, as you can tell, I am going live with Katie Robert. Katie is here with me today. We're doing a little Q&A. So if anyone has any questions, or if you come up with any questions during the live, feel free to comment down below, ask them, and we will get to them. Um, I know we're a little early, uh, five minutes early, but we can just chat. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, if you're not early, you're late. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so Katie, are you reading anything good right now? Yes, I just finished reading The Last Flower Bride, or the... The Tale of the Last Flower Bride. That's what it is. And it is, it ruined my life. It was so good. It's <laughs> its like dark and dreamy and fairy tale and just everything that I want in a book. And it stuck the landing like in the most perfect way possible. And um, if you like fairy tale stuff, you want this book. It's kind of like a reverse bluebeard, like a little bit. And um, that's my favorite fairy tale. So I was very excited about it. It's by Roshni Chakshi, right? Yes, yes. Okay. Is it, I was wondering, is it like an adult romance or YA? It's adult. It's not like particularly explicit or anything. I, their sex exists in it, but it's not like, ba bam. Um, yeah, it's very much adult, but it's, it's, I don't know. She just does something. It's so yeah. good. <laughs> So we have some people here commenting. Hello. Welcome, everyone. Hello. Um, ooh, A Court of Mist and Fury, Sarah J. Mass. Always good. Um, any play. Ooh, that's for audiobooks. There's so many ones now that people are like, is that legit? I'm like, I have no idea. Most of the time. I don't know. Probably. <laughs> Hopefully. Probably. No, I'm sure it is. <laughs> <laughs> also, I apologize for my dog. He is going insane today. Don't know why, but you'll hear him in the background sometimes. Oh, well, one thank of my you. favorite authors. I never, like, there's so many good ones. <laughs> so many good authors. Oh, any recommendations? Um, so I am big in fantasy right now. So like Tasha Suri is one of my favorites. Um, now I'm going to play. It's like you asked for what's your favorite book? Oh, um, <laughs> uh, she Who Became the Sun, the next sequel is coming out, I think this year. And I'm very excited because it gave me all the gender feels and like it was just delightful. Um yeah, gosh. Now I'm going to blank. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I no, I know. <laughs> I understand. When you're put in the spot, you just forget all your favorites. I'm like, do I read books? I don't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm, I feel like it's legit, right? <laughs> I'm sure. I'm I'm sure. I I believe you. <laughs> Ooh, a question from Christine. Who's your favorite of the deal with the demon monsters? Oh, no. Um. I mean, I think Rusalka is probably going to be my favorite. Maybe I don't, but I don't know. Like Bram, the one, the one that comes out next month, the Gargoyles Captive. He is, he is a mess. He is a big old mess. He is a so sad. He's so sad, and he's like submissive, and like I do love him a lot. Um, but I love them all in different ways. It's hard to pick because they're all such uniquely to themselves. And like, of course, Azazel at the end will be my favorite when the time comes because he's evolved so in such a fun way over the series that I didn't really intend for him to be like daddy but he, he is so <laughs> it'll be fun <laughs> I mean you can't go wrong with daddy characters <laughs> <No>. <laughs> remind me what what monster he is he's a demon a bargainer demon oh he so the, what, the main one the yeah. center of the series, right? Yeah, the, my cover artist went just was like, how about I deliver every dream that you could ever anticipate with this cover? And it's just perfect. <laughs> Ooh, have you released the cover yet? 
Yes, it's on my Instagram, but it's not like it's not for pre-order or anything yet because I have to get through the next couple first. But um, but I did share the cover art because it was too good not to. Okay, let me look this up because now I'm curious. <laughs> yeah, I shared. I think f I shared uh, the succubus and the um, and the final, the demon's queen, at the same time because I was like, here you go. Because my cover artist is like, what if I just finish them before the end of the year? I was like, that's perfect. I, you're so far ahead of me. Yeah, because those covers are just stunning. I love, love that style. Okay, let me. I don't. Is it a real? No, it's um, it's just back a ways. Um, let's see. It's like I shared like the six covers. Oh my god, I post so much on Instagram. I'm so sorry, everyone. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry, it's two. The two, it looks like that. But, yeah. <laughs> Love it. Oh, a question for me? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Which um, one is what? <laughs> let's see. I think... It's probably off the top of my hat, your dad will do. Like, I just love the smutty novellas. Like, I am, my go-to is Jessa Kane, and anyone who can match Jessa is just like, yes, I need more that, of that. <laughs> that is the highest of compliments, because those people are like, crack. <laughs> they are, but yeah, your dad will do was great. That one was, that, it was just... I was on another level with that one. <laughs> <laughs> I did want to also ask them, you have your cat Taylor pseudonym, right? Yes. I I mostly created it so I could write that one book that was oh, like, okay. it's not like, it's like if I had went even harder on your dad will do, it would have been that book. But, um, and then I wrote it and then I had no desire to write further. So like maybe oh, no. I'll come back to it or maybe not. I don't know. I just I, apparently had a need. <laughs> yeah. I, I was just wondering if you ever plan to write more novellas, not necessarily like a sequel or anything, but just any other smutty erotic. They novellas. work really well as like pressure valve books. And I just, I've been trying to like focus on sustainability because I, I went too hard the last couple of years and as all my health stuff can attest to it's been not great so I've kind of cleared the decks when it comes to like anything extra at this point but like that's not to say that I won't have a your dad will do that was like I read this book and I need to have write a book in conversation with this book because I read um the filthy rich American trilogy by Nikki Sloan and I was like am I in father-in-law stuff like I need to explore this and I wrote your dad will do in like six days because I had all these feelings after reading that book and which is happening right now there. in real time after yeah. reading um Haunting Adeline by H.D. Carlton that book made me feel things I was like I don't understand what's happening to me I don't think I like this but I think I might like this and so now I'm writing a stocking book I don't know it's oh it's my gosh I love that <laughs> <laughs> won't be out till next year but it is a thing that will exist <laughs> I love that Zade inspired you to do a stalker romance well it's just like she threads the needle so well in that book because it could be too much on 27 different levels but because of their dynamic together it just works and it's just Ma, like perfect. <laughs> I totally agree. I loved it. It was one of my favorites from last year. Um, a specific question for Katie was Hades from Neon Gods always meant to look like Keanu Reeves. I mean, he looks like it's funny because I like when people ask me who I fan cast, it's usually like several people that just kind of mind meld in my head. So it's like Keanu Reeves and like Ben Barnes are like the two that it's like those and those guys they play these characters that embody what Hades is to me except he's like much softer but they they both kind of have like a soft vibe even when they're being bad and it's like I don't it's just something <laughs> so yes yes he was always that's who I always pictured I am so glad that came through <laughs> long live Keanu Reeves does the step pack also kind of look like Keanu Reeves yeah it does i he was one of the inspirations that i sent and um 
and like so the art that they did for that one i don't think they actually did the full step back in they started that with wicked beauty um but yeah it's a uh, step back yeah. from Radiant sin oh my god i love this my editor's like my goal is to get a full color one i'm like you should get a full color one for both yes, of us it's bring important back, to us bring back the step back trend i would love you for that <laughs> just I, alone it's all i want like we're actually for the the kickstarters that we're doing in may this year this spring um the hardcovers are going to have full step backs in them like and it's just I'm very excited because <laughs> that's all I want is like that nostalgic vibe of but like fresh. <laughs> yes. So this is for the the pirate ones. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. They're we're going uh, full out with those ones. <laughs> yeah. Because for the the last one, you guys had the the page. What do you call them? Uh, like the the, the slip ins or oh oh yeah the vellums. We're doing that again. Yes. Oh. Okay. Um, I think we're doing two sets of them. We're doing one that's like kind of like last year and one that's like a little not safe for work. So that that's all we want. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so yes. Yeah, so um, spoilers. For, I mean, it's early on in the book. They found out it's so it's one of those things that it exists and all the 13 know about it and they had someone it, but the laws like it's kind of like our laws now like who goes through and reads the laws all the way through down to the each clause like not your average citizen but the people who move within the laws know them a little bit better um and I'm going to make a fool of myself now because I don't have my my series Bible in front of me to tell me. But I'm pretty sure that there was a, a, a member of the 13 relatively recently in the last couple generations of Cassandra's family. Uh, I might be wrong. So I don't have my notes. But that also would contribute to it. I'd never specified just because it's one of those open secrets like the general Olympus public up until the end of Radiant Sin was not aware that this existed. But the upper tiers and the legacy families are they just know better because you don't bite the hand that feeds you and like if you get into power that way there's nothing to stop somebody from doing the same thing to you i was going to ask how you keep track of everything going on in the series because it's a lot now you're four four books in so many characters i actually finished writing the sixth book i'm two books ahead of y'all and oh, wow. um yeah, I have a very intensive series Bible and like a timeline because I, my, my brain is soup, <laughs> soup or Swiss cheese, whatever you want to say. Um, it's very hard to keep track of stuff just by memory. And so I just keep really extensive notes and, um, and, and I do my best. <laughs> do you ever get things mixed up and then someone catches it before you I do? Oh, without fail, somebody, I mixed up the last names and I think it was one of the Muse watches like a couple months back and somebody's like, wait, they're part of that family. And I'm like, no, no, I just made an error. It was my bad. It's not, a, it's not an Easter egg. It is a Katie mistake. So yeah, I definitely, I have a really good editor and really good copy editors though that usually can like catch stuff before I do. But every once in a while, something will slip through it's just it's just a matter of time when you have so many moving parts i saw you posted this character map and then i saw that hades was related to hades i was like wait what <laughs> yeah it's it's one of those things that's been kind of like an open secret like i wrote a hades hades reunion tour or not nope not to reunion, <laughs> reunion short story um sorry i'm a little loopy today gosh um and it's actually available to my newsletter for free. It's like like three chapters, essentially, of the hat takes place after Neon Gods. Uh, but it was one of those things that I wasn't sure if I was ever going to comment on when I initially released Neon Gods. But so many people were like, what's happening? And there's not really room in the main series to explore that fully. So I've been doing that with, uh, with various shorts and check-ins and whatnot. Uh, thankfully the patreon keeps voting for them so i get to like check in with my favorites 
Katie, can you tell us a little bit more about Hunt on Dark Waters? I am very hyped about it. Yes. Oh, I cannot believe they're letting me do this. So it is basically you will actually meet the hero in the um, in this year's Kickstarter. He is a side character. Um, but my whole thing is that like all my worlds in that I write in exist in different realms, they, but they're all in the same like grand world. And with deal with the demon, we started seeing like what happens when you jump realms, like what, what's there. And so I was like, what if like the space between realms was patrolled by pirates? And what if they were, uh, I'm going to butcher how to say this. I'm working on it. The Kunanun, which is the like the dogs of Anun from Welsh mythology and like the great hunt or the wild hunt. Sorry. Um, and so I kind of started playing with that. It was like, I, I just want more pirates. I want more pirates with like high heat because we have like a lot of YA pirates and a lot of fantasy pirates. And there's it exists. There's pirates with high heat that exist, but I want more. And so. I set out to write it. My hero is one of the Kunanun. He's basically like a dark paladin pirate. He's very tired. He follows the law because the law's of the law and we do the law. And then enters this chaotic bisexual witch who's just like, but why? It doesn't make sense, but why? And all she wants to do is go home. But when you wander into Threshold, which is like the realm between realms, um, you get a choice. You can join the pirates or you can die. And that's that. those are the choices you get. Um, so she joins with every intention of piecing out the first second she gets. And then the other twist in it, of course, is that her ex-girlfriend who she's on the run from is Lizzie from Court of a Vampire Queen, which is Wolf's sister. So Lizzie will be book two with a Selkie and it's a morality chain sapphic romance. And I'm very excited to write that one too. So, so lots of pirates. <laughs> So is Hunt on Dark Waters going to be the novella in the Kickstarter or is it going to no, be? No, it's a full length novel. It'll be out in November. The um, the one in the Kickstarter is a novella called To Kidnap a Princess, also sapphic. Um, it's just our, the, the Kickstarter, each story happens. We cross into Atlantis, which is like out of time and space. And they all happen over the course of like a week ish of like the events on this island. And it's just sort of my jumping off point for the rest of my pirate series is we get to meet the hero. He's not a very good person. It's great. And then that book will be out in November. The main one, the big one. Yes, I'm here for more pirates because I think the last one I read that was not published before 2000 <laughs> was Sea of Ruin by Pam Godwin. Oh my God, that book blew me away goes so hard <laughs> she goes so yeah. hard <laughs> yeah so if we can get more pirate romances like that that would be incredible that's all i want in life <laughs> <laughs> um oh, can you tell us a little bit about your writing routine yes uh, so i am i'm adhd but i'm also like other neuro spicy and so like as much as i need the chaos i crave um, routine as well so pretty much it's the same every day like I get up I do my breakfast stuff because protein's important and then I write until I hit my word count because I reverse engineer my deadlines so I know exactly how many words I need to write every day because I like that scaffolding up uh, and I block out weekends so that I can make up stuff because of it inevitably I get sick or something happens or just a bad day and and I found that with my ADHD, if I have like insomnia nights, I just can't focus to save my life. So it's good to have those cushion built in. Um, and then I just I write like two, two to three thousand words a day and just like clockwork. It's really boring. But <laughs> but I do write pretty much every day just because I am a creature of habit. And if I stop writing, I forget how to do it, which is silly. But that's how I operate. <laughs> How off, how long does it usually take you to write a book? I know you you said you wrote that novella in like a week, but is that... Yeah, that's not normal. Okay. I don't recommend. <laughs> uh, no, it's usually like my main books, like my monster books is about a month. The other ones, it's about two months. I usually clock about 40,000 words a month is like what I aim for. Sometimes I need more than that because invariably I 
corner myself into a deadline on accident a couple times a year where I have to like do higher word counts, but it's more just like eating the elephant one bite at a time. And it's yeah, between usually between like four to eight weeks is uh, takes is what it takes me. I'm quite excited about Orpheus, Eurydice, and Karen. Sharon, I never know how to say <laughs> that name. <laughs> my, um, my, because uh, I dictate now, I voice to text, and it says Karen, which means I've started saying Karen instead of Karen. Um, so I just know when that book comes out, I'll be like, yeah, and Karen, and people are like, no, that's not how you say that. <laughs> I, I know, but my dictation doesn't, and it's easy to find and replace Karen. <laughs> but I'm excited. I I have not got edits back on that book, and I'm very curious on what my editor says because, um, I mean, it's angsty, it's a mess. It, they're messy together, but there's some like puppy play that sort of snuck in there, like some like, um, you know, degradation or sorry, shame and praise kink, and I wasn't expecting that, and I. I'm really curious what my editor is going to say, so we'll find out. I listened to the audiobooks for this series, and I'm glad I did, because all the names and pronunciations go over it, my head. Eurydice, to this day, when I look at it, I say Eurydice in my head first, and then I'm like, no, that's it's Eurydice. Like, <laughs> it, the, the Greek names are just magical like that sometimes. <laughs> And speaking of the audiobooks, I don't know how I missed it, but the name of your male narrator is Moorcock. Um, <laughs> yes, Alex Moorcock. Did you did you pick him based on that name? And it was they, just so you know, they oh, actually they sent me like we want to work with these narrators, and they sent me links to ones that they've done. Her name's consistent across because she does a lot of romance. He under a different name, which I could not remember to save my life. Um, he does a, ha, obviously Alex Moorcock is a pseudonym, but um, he does a lot of like science fiction fantasy under his other name. And my only thing was, I was like, is he going to be okay? Like doing, saying the words that are in my book. And they're like, yeah, he's fine with it. And I didn't realize he had a romance uh, pseudonym. So he, he made some choices with that. He, he was very on the nose. <laughs> Yeah, because I listen, like they they say the names of the narrators at the beginning, and then I did a double take. Like, did they really say that? <laughs> it came out, and I was like, is that the name of the person that I picked? I was like, <laughs> <laughs> like it was, it was yeah, cool. That's funny. Uh, how many books are going to be in these series? Ten. Ten books. Ten full length books. I Who knows if. I don't have time to write novellas now, but there are some characters that I don't have room for in the main series because I, as much as I would like to write everybody's stories, I'm trying to keep a pretty tight series arc, tight for 10 books. But um, there are characters that I would like to revisit in novella form and kind of give them the happily ever after. But yeah, 10 books released every six-ish months. So the next couple of years and then we'll be done. <laughs> So maybe by 20... 26? Maybe? Yeah. Which seems like I... so far away, but it is not very far at all. Because Neon Gods only came out, what, two, one, two years ago? I think in June, it'll be two years. Because we're, yeah, we're every six... Yeah, so that's about right. Um yeah, because I've already written book six, so I only have four more to go in the series on my side of things, which is wild. Has any book given you any trouble? Um, interestingly enough, Radiant Sin was the one that gave me trouble because Apollo's so good, and I kept bumping up against the fact that he's too good and he's too aware of the power imbalance, and he would never put her in a position where like she would feel obligated to have sex with him. And also they're in this house party for spy reasons. So he's too smart to be having sex at this house party where it's dangerous. And so getting them into bed together was so challenging. I was like, I, I had to do a lot of it in edits. Cause my editor's like, this is not sexy enough. I'm like, I know, but they're too good. They're too capable. Capable people don't danger bang in a murder house party, but they do in Olympus. So <laughs> that, but that book, yeah, gave me just fits 
um, after that cruel seduction was cake. They're just, it's just sexy mess. And we'll see uh, the, and uh, Charon Eurydice and Orpheus was not as bad, but it is, I don't know if I got the balance quite right. So you can fix anything and edit. So <laughs> I was wondering about that because Apollo is just so different from all the previous guys. You'll never see another one like him in Olympus. Oh. That's for certain. Nobody, not even Poseidon is like good like he is. So it's, it was a nice linchpin turning point for the series to have them at that point. But um, we won't see that again. <laughs> <laughs> Um, the mention of Carver City and Wicked Beauty caught my eye on the reread. Yes, they are connected. They exist in the same world. Um, Dark Olympus happens a couple years after the Wicked Villains series ends. Don't ask me how many years because it's between one and five. I'm not entirely sure. <laughs> but based on Hades' age, it's it's not very long. It's less than five years after the end of uh, Wicked villains there we go <laughs> um another wicked beauty question did you always mean for the slight cheating to happen yes it i mean i didn't i write intuitively so like i knew what the conflict points were and i knew approximately where we were going to end but like the characters inform the choices through um it's it's one of those things that it's like kind of cheating, but kind of not like they said, no, we're not going to do this, but like, you know, it needed to be a thing. Achilles is just the most he's the most and he's bad at boundaries. And, you know, it, it, there needed to be a conflict point between him and Ach him and Patroclus. And that's just sort of what happened naturally. Um, because he is the, driving force that gets all of them together and without him crossing the line it wouldn't have happened and then how do you deal with people getting angry with you for helen being in the mix yeah i i it's really interesting because even in like the source content achilles is by so i don't know why people are i think that I think that the song of Achilles influenced a lot of people's feelings on the matter, but I wasn't trying to tell that story. And I wasn't trying to tell obviously a like perfect retelling because if I did, they would all be dead. So <laughs> that's kind of my thing of like, well, there were people, I got a lot of pushback initially of like, you're ruining this story. And I'm like, well, they died. They get to live and be happy in mine. Um, interestingly enough, I, also get a lot of pushback for the fact that the relationship remains open after the end of the book like the epilogue it establishes that canonically which was incredibly important to me because polyamorous people aren't fixed and it's not a thing that needs to be fixing by like the love of a good person or two people or multiple people and so but there's a lot of people that had a lot of big problem with that and um and like to write me emails telling me that the characters I wrote are wrong, which is interesting. But, you know, I mean, everybody's <laughs> entitled to their opinion. And it's if they want to read a strictly male male version of that, they can go read Song of Achilles and be sad at the end. I'm sure other versions of it exist. I think RM Virtues also either wrote it or is about to write it. So, like, I highly recommend that. He's a great and it will end happily. <laughs> Reading Patroclus's point of views in Wicked Beauty made me cry so many times. He felt so deeply. <laughs> it also hurt me. I, as much as it hurts y'all, it hurts me while writing sometimes that I'm like, oh, God, like, buddy, let me hug you. Um, <laughs> but, you know, he, that's, yeah, I don't know. It's just one of those things like their relationship needed to be slightly imperfect for there to be room for growth i'm ready for orpheus's groveling phase yes yeah. listen he does a grovel through probably 80 percent of that book so <laughs> and it's like kinky grovel so it's like extra fun it's he he gets put through his paces and and it's his turning point actually starts in Radiant Sin where like he has that conversation with Apollo. You see it again in 
maybe not the next one. I don't you you just start his his arc starts there with him being like, I know that I'm the problem. It's like, yeah, buddy, you are the problem. <laughs> Is he the, the sixth book? Yes. Okay. Yeah. And so, but he goes into that being like, I'm the problem. And like I won't approach her because I know I'm the problem, but like Karen kind of forces the issue a little bit because she can't move on until they like deal with it. But then in dealing with it, it becomes inherently more complicated because of course it does. <laughs> um, I just read Electric Idol for the boy band Readathon. I was surprised by how much I liked it. Thanks for writing a sexy fat girl. We're hot and flabby and men love it. Listen, I, that's my, I, fat girls need love too <laughs> in fact guys in fact everybody's um that's i really wanted to make sure in this series that it wasn't just like skinny folk get in happily ever afters and so psyche's fat cassandra's fat pandora's fat ariadne's fat um i think poseidon will be by the time we get there i'm not certain yet so like don't hold me to that but you know i, I try to represent good body diversity throughout the series Oh, Karen. Karen's got a little bit to, extra to love. <laughs> More people excited for that grovel. <laughs> that's good. Because honestly, it's really funny because a lot of people are like, I will never forgive him. And I'm like, that's I respect that. But also, like, let me convince you to do it. Because um, that's my favorite thing is having people be like, no, I hate that character. I'll never deal like never. And it's such a fun challenge as an author, which is sometimes you won't get there. Some people will never forgive and like respect, but it's such a fun challenge to be like, but like, would you let me, would you let me convince you? Um, like the fact that Zeus and Hera is the number one ask for a book in this series is right. hilarious to me because I'm very excited for them too, but it's freaking Zeus and Hera. And historically, obviously that relationship is like not. <laughs> Uh, as someone who listens to the audiobooks, I love the narrator. So odd name or not, I think they've done a fantastic job. They have. They've done so. I, so many people are happy with the audiobooks, and I don't listen to them because it's weird to hear my words spoken back to me. But it it seems like it's working out. <laughs> Did you purposely want them to have a, an accent, like a British accent? No, I had no idea they were going to do that oh. until the first book came out. And I'm like they're English because like my Olympus is it, I mean I never specifically established where it is but like it's in North America for me just because it's next to Carver City or roundabouts so um but it you know I don't try to place it intentionally just because it's one I'm bad at geography and two um you know it, I don't want it to be I want it to be separate from the real world, even though it's a contemporary setting. I want it to feel like it very much its own place. That's kind of funny. They just, they just went with it. They did. They're just like, here we go. And I was like, I guess we're doing it. I do. And I don't know, like British folk would have to let me know, but like, I thought everybody says Euro for like the, the, the like Turkish, I think it's Turkish. Um, like, like the thing that they eat in neon gods, and he says gyro and like so many people have been like that's wrong and i'm like i do actually agree with you <laughs> <laughs> i i thought it was like hero or something like that yeah he says gyro and a number of people are very upset about it and honestly probably same like i don't know what happened there <laughs> you know, all the, the narrator notes that you need to give them it's for that <laughs> yeah yeah not anything else <laughs> Uh, do you have to read the Wicked Villains first before reading no. this series? No, it's it's completely meant to stand on its own. Um, both series do. It's just one of those hopefully satisfying Easter eggs if you read both series that there is a little bit of like, oh, if you know, you know kind of thing. But you absolutely don't have to read them first or second or ever if you don't want to. <laughs> If you had to pick, who are your favorite heroes or heroines you've written in Dark Olympus? So that I've written to date, so we're not going to count Zeus and Hera because I only I did write a short of them, but it doesn't count. Um, I love Aphrodite Eris um, in the next book. Like she's my favorite heroine to date because she's totally different from the other ones. She's vicious. She's 
ruthless to a fault, but also has this like kind of like cracked center that like makes my heart hurt because she does all these things. She's very much her father's daughter and does all these things to serve Olympus, but it like, it hurts to do it. And it hurts to like, be like, I'm a monster, but like, I'm going to do what I got to do. And like, there's a point at the end that like totally made me cry. We were writing it. And I just, I love her so much. Um, as far as heroes, I love Achilles just because he's so his audacity is so like I would probably hate him in real life because it's like could you not could you be a little less arrogant and the fact that it's earned is so upsetting because it's like of course you're arrogant like you always win and it's just and even like the the hits he takes he just bounces back up and writing him was so fun because he never quite did what I expected him to do. Like the scene in the bedroom with when he walks in on them, like I wasn't sure how that was going to go. And he just as a character, like drove that in such a fun way that anytime I need to just shake the situation up, I toss him into it. If Apollo is good boy or Patroclus is soft boy. Truth, truth. Absolutely. Um, (laughs) 100%. (laughs) Um, I need an Apollo serenading scene. I'm not over the fact that he sings and arrows can cook. <laughs> maybe, maybe we'll, uh, I'll write that at a, a check in at some point, but <laughs> yeah, arrows cooking is there's a, um, I'm going to compile it for my newsletter at some point, but like there's a Thanksgiving scene in, uh, that is from arrows point of view. And like, it's my favorite thing to write him in like Demeter's household, like dealing with, that family and whatnot and like him and Hades being like these orphaned pups essentially brought into this fold of this very scary woman is just delightful how often do you write these novellas like do you write them or well, short so, uh patreon votes every month so they every month they get to nominate whatever they want like sometimes it's some weird shit it's hilarious and then they vote and whatever entry gets the most votes by towards the end of the month is which is when i write it i just write like uh usually less than 15 pages they're like pretty short but it's just like a short of something to order essentially and so sometimes they pick dark olympus this year or this month is actually this month i think is dark olympus valentine's so i have to figure out what i'm going to do for that but it's going to be interesting because it's fun to write these like awesome little check-ins and like sort of see these softer moments that don't necessarily fit in with the grand series. So they're kind of like more easy to write. They don't have like a hard time. Yeah. Just cause they're very brief and they're not meant to be like super high conflict for the most part. And so it's just me having a little bit of fun and revisiting old friends or like I've, al- I've opened it up so they can vote for stuff that's like not Canon and nothing's won yet, but there's some interesting, there's, <laughs> there's every once in a while, every couple months, somebody will nominate Wicked Villains, Hades and Persephone. And it's like, it's not canon. It'll never be canon, but it would be really hilarious to write. And like, someday I hope that wins. <laughs> oh my God, wait, <laughs> that would yeah. be kind of amazing. <laughs> right? I was like, I just, I think I, I love you for whoever thought of that. I can't remember who it was now, but it, yeah, it, every once in a while they try and it hasn't, it hasn't won yet, but someday maybe. <laughs> well, if anyone here is on your Patreon, you should go vote for that. Cause I'm very curious. <laughs> What are your opinions on the SUNY Awards? You've been a winner already for a category and two of your books are finalists now. Yeah, I think it's awesome. It's really cool that it's like reader nominated, reader voted. Like I, I, my personal boundary with awards is I don't feel comfortable being like, go vote for me because it feels like pressure and that's not my vibe. But I, it's the most organic award as far as I'm concerned, because there's not a lot of politics involved. It's just purely on like what people are into. And that's really cool to see. And I always pick up a number of like books onto my TBR when with the finalists and the semifinalists. I'm truly amazed how Katie can come up with so many sex scenes. They are so different and creative in all the books too. It's, it's, purely because they are informed by character and all the characters are different and the character combinations are different. And those characters inform 
those sex scenes to the point where um, I have a friend who used to be a dominatrix and she, I'll be texting her and be like, I think I'm writing puppy play. Cause it's not like I set out to be like, I'm going to check this kink off or whatever. It just, sometimes it happens. And then I have to go do some research because I obviously want to make sure that I'm representing things appropriately, like within the various flavors of sex. Have you gotten stuck yet on any sex scenes now that you've written what, 20, 30 books? Oh, God, so many. <laughs> I sometimes I'll be just like exhausted, like mentally. And like, I find that when I skip scenes, when I'm drafting sex scenes are the ones that I sometimes skip because it's like, I don't know how to make this sexy right now. It doesn't make sense. It's not working out. This feels awful. And you know, when I'm in a better mood, I can go back and make it work. But yeah, sometimes, sometimes it's like, oh, have I done this before? But it's usually it's okay because the characters are unique to themselves and that helps significantly to make things continue to feel fresh. I think I saw somewhere that you use your, your dolls, right? As <laughs> oh, I'm very visual. And so when you're writing multiples, um, this, making sure that limbs can do the things that you're saying writing the limbs can do it's important to me to like make sure somebody's not sprouting like a sixth arm or something and uh and so i have these they're like yoga barbies or something they're like bendable and um occasionally i will block out scenes that way which cracks me up when i post them because people are like that doesn't look like that character and i'm like no it's they're they're just the, it's a body it's the body posture that i'm trying to recreate there i'm not meant to be like the specific scene they're in yoga clothing it's fine <laughs> <laughs> if anyone is like no that position's not possible you can just hit them up with a barbie I do somebody it was all in good fun. Somebody posted something like this doesn't seem possible. And I was like, actually, in fact, it is. And they're like, you know what? That's fair. <laughs> so um, it, I got a good laugh out of that. That's, that's probably the best. Well, actually, kind of response. <laughs> yeah, I never would have like posted. I, and I didn't tag him or anything. I was like, I saw somebody questioning this. And I just wanted to let you know that this is, in fact, true. Or like a thing that can happen. Um, Cause I didn't want to like put them on the spot or like be weird about it, but um, they did see it and they like messaged me and got a good laugh out of it. So it was great. Out of all of your books, which was inherently the most fun to write and which was the most challenging? Oh, there have been some challenging ones. Um, gosh, I have so much fun I'm in this place right now where I'm writing like joy first and, or letting joy drive me rather. And like, I have so much fun in all my books. I, and I, and I've written like, I think like 60 something now. So like, I couldn't tell you like the most challenge. Actually, no, that's a lie. I can. The most challenging one to write was right after I had my youngest child who's seven now. So it was quite a while ago. Um, my publisher at the time was not, super understanding about it and so there's like when are you gonna get us this thing and so i just like wrote this god awful novella that i'm not proud of and i cannot wait for it to fade into the ether forever um because that's i think the only book i've really like phoned it in on it but i was just like get it out of here i'm not sleeping i haven't slept in like six weeks like just take this book from me um but for the most part like these days it's just like i'm so excited about every single book i'm writing and there is a period from 60% to 80% in every book where I hate them. Like, but that's just my process is there's a point where I hate it and then I love it again and it's fine. We have a newbie here. I've seen your books around. Can you tell me what they're about? So they are high heat bonkers. Like don't look too closely at the physics. <laughs> um, the Dark Olympus series is kind of very, very loose erotic romance retellings of various great myths that they end in happily ever after and not tragedy. No one turns into a tree or gets murdered horribly of the main characters. Um, yeah, but they're like, if you're looking for classical retellings, they're not. It's like, I, I joke that they're like the fast and furious version of Greek mythology. It's like, get in the car. We're going to have fun. Everyone's super sexy. We're going to go fast. Will we go to the moon? I don't know. Don't ask questions. It's fine. It's going to be an adventure. And um, yeah, that's kind of the experience you get with my books. It's like they're really heavy on characters and it's 
plot through character as opposed to plot of like it's not like epic fantasy or anything like that if you lived in olympus and were part of the inner circles would you consider having kids in that surrounding oh oh <laughs> um i think it would very much depend who my parents were because like um like adonis's mothers are lovely patroclus's mothers which i now just realized they both have yep um <laughs> or uh their parents lovely um and even like apollo and orpheus's parents are like the worst like so if i had good parents it would probably very much influence my decision on whether or not to have kids if i had zeus as a parent probably not i don't think Oh God, I don't think any of his kids want kids. I mean, his, his Zeus, his Perseus has to have children. Otherwise Zeus dies with him, but um, none of the other ones want kids. So it, it would heavily depend on who my parents were for sure. Um, yeah, but you know, it is what it is. <laughs> In Bulgaria, we say gyro oh. the same way. Wow didn't realize that was a controversy and yes your books have made it to bulgaria wow that's awesome that's hilarious that's that's good to know though because i knew I, I knew it had to be accurate somewhere otherwise they wouldn't have said it because normally they don't make mistakes like that so i just assumed that it was um you know just not north american <laughs> does the casios casios sibling okay. line <laughs> Go. Yeah. How, I have no idea. No. Um, Cass <laughs> Cassios. Cassios. Well, Cassios. Perseus, Helen, Eris, Hercules, from oldest to youngest. Hold on one second. My somebody's ringing my front door, and my husband has headphones in. Um. Yes. I what yes that's correct because when I went to write Eris I was like oh she's the second oldest but she is not she's not the second oldest she is third so yes that is correct. Hermes is such an interesting character. What an agent of chaos. She is the coupling of like the Hades Town Hermes and the Circe's Hermes and just Hermes from myth. Like I love that. Because I feel like in a lot of mythology or like the retellings, you see Hermes is just kind of like a "What's up, guys? I'm a, my check out my sweet, you know, flightiness," and I really like the meanness that you kind of see in some of these more recent retellings. That it's it's just very enticing to me. So like chaos, but like there's a little center of like she's she has her own thing going on, and she is just as ruthless as the other 13 but she just covers it up better um at least initially <laughs> will she get her own book yes she's book 10 oh the last one okay mm -hmm. yeah Maybe she's got stuff in play that. yeah <laughs> yeah what once we once the next couple books come out it'll make sense why she's last but yeah i'm both excited and terrified to write her book because I love her so much and everybody else does too. So I'm like, I'll do justice, I hope. Will anyone that isn't on the Patreon ever see the short novellas? Yes. So I plan on, I think I finally have enough to compile them and I'm probably going to, I haven't quite decided what I'm going to do with them yet. As they will be available, whether it's through retailers or my newsletter or something, there'll be a way to get them. The... Zeus and ha uh, Zeus and Hera there I wrote their wedding night for the Patreon and then I went and expanded it and that will actually be included in the Barnes and Noble special edition of Cruel Seduction that I think is up for pre-order now if it's not up yet now it'll be up later um but it'll have that wedding night scene that's <laughs> got me very excited for their book and angry at myself that I can't write it yet um because it's just and that, that wedding night scene takes place between Electric Idol and Wicked Beauty, just like in the background. Eris is one of my favorite heroes. He made me realize I loved Morality Chain. Yes. You should read um, Heart of Darkness by Nalini Singh. Is <sighs> the best Morality <sighs> Chain I've ever written. Caleb Kerchak, just mm, my heart. Um, that is he's the amazing. Best paranormal romance for me 
I love it. I, I just, I still like, I own the whole series. I have not read past that point because I'm like, Caleb, I just keep That's rereading that true. one. <laughs> that is true. That is the year of the series and I've finished it or at least I'm all caught up. Yeah. But I mean, you should still continue though. I will. I, I go through stints where I will read like five of her books in a row and then I have to take a break because they're too good and I get sad because I'm like, I'm enjoying this so much, but like, they're too good. <laughs> Is there an older backlist series or book you wish more people would give a try, like pre-Wicked Villains era? Not, okay, yes, actually, pre-Wicked Villains. So I I don't usually recommend people try out my category romance just because it's, it's a different time and it's not stuff that I'm super proud of. But I am proud of the O'Malley series, which they're actually re-releasing like them starting in May with new titles and new covers. Um, but they're like mafia, all the it's where I ended up with in dark Olympus and wicked villains. And the books I'm writing now started with the O'Malley series, because that was the first time I wrote a book that I was like, am I allowed to do this? Like, and I kept expecting somebody to tell me no, because when you write in category romance, people tell you no a lot. Cause it's very clear boundaries and you have to stay within them. And so in the marriage contract was, is the first one, which is now titled Dark Succession. Um, the heroine shoots her fiance in the first chapter. And I was like, someone's going to tell me I'm not allowed to write this. And nobody did. And so I just had so much fun with that series. Like it's it, the sixth book is one of my favorite books I've ever written. Um, the Bastards Bargain. Um, it just delightful. <laughs> And then you did the same thing with the second generation, right? <laughs> the shooting. Yeah, well, that was on purpose. <laughs> but yeah. yes, I, I, I'm coming back to that series after I get through some stuff because I have plans. I was so excited to write it. I just started too many series at the same time. And so I had to prioritize. But I'm going to, I think I'm actually going to rewrite it in first person because that's kind of where I vibe now. And then release each of the books in first person. Oh, so you'll re rewrite the first book. Um, yeah. What is it? The Bastard's uh, Betrayal? Yes, The Bastard's Betrayal. Oh, yeah, because it's it's kind of hasn't found its home yet, like with readers. And it, part of that's just because the series hasn't continued. But I, it's that one I'm coming back for because I have ideas and I'm very excited about them. <laughs> yes. I mean, I'm looking forward to it. I'm all about Mafia. And I, I really like that first one. Yeah. If you could go home with a character or book, couple, thruple, whoever for a night, who would it be? It's a great question. Um, I don't know if I would survive it, but it would probably be the Beast trio. Like Isabel, Gaten, and the Beast. I, They might kill me, but I would, what a way to go. What a way to go. I don't know. <laughs> How did you cope with writing four points of views for Cruel Seduction? Wicked Beauty was only three, and I was overwhelmed by emotions. I was so stressed out the entire time. I was having fun, but I, I definitely, there was moments. Because so at the core of Cruel Seduction is Aphrodite and Hephaestus. And Adonis and Pandora also have points of view, but they are not the core relationship that's pushing everything forward. So they have it. I think a few less points of view overall, if you start counting, um, it was a lot. It was a lot. I had to draw a map of the relationships to make sure that I was being accurate. Not everyone could be contentious. So like Aphrodite and Pandora are soft with each other immediately, like immediately. They're the only conflict there is because of Hephaestus. And um, yeah, it was, it was the, one of the most ambitious things I've done to date. I, my editor says I pulled it off. So hopefully everybody likes it. <laughs> I just want to hear a writer's perspective on how they take Goodreads reviews or reviews in general. Are they helpful or damaging to your creative freedom? I don't read them. I, with like, so it's one of those things that if I write something that's harmful, I, people will tag me and I will find out and I will correct it. But when it comes to readers' points of view, as far as their personal opinions or tastes or what have you, it's none of my business. And I stay off Goodreads because that place is not for me. It's not, it's for readers. It's not for me. I don't think. And I 
take things entirely too personally and get sad when people are like, Katie Robert fucking sucks. And I'm like, like, maybe I do suck. And so it's just better for me to, in my like emotional well being, to stay away from reviews. I don't even really read positive ones anymore just because once I write that book and put it out into the world, it's no longer mine. I have no control over how people like engage with that story and that content. And then it becomes yours. And that I can't let personal tastes of people decide how I will write future books because then I, there'll be too many voices in my head. So, you know, I just, I stay away from reviews. They are for readers. They are not for me. <laughs> yeah. You just stick to writing, turn in the book by the deadline and then on to the next book. <laughs> yep. Yep. And if there's anything super good, somebody will send it to me and I'll be like, that's amazing. And then I'll move on. <laughs> Is the pirate series going to have audiobooks? Um, so the Kickstarter, maybe, maybe, or maybe not, I don't know yet, but the, I'm, I don't have confirmation that they will, but I imagine they will. It just hasn't been informed because it's through a publisher. And so it's one of those things where like, I just got notified that Radiant Sin has an audiobook. They're like, we, we sold the audiobook, And I'm like, yes, it's been out for two weeks. Like, awesome. So, um, it'll happen probably. I just, I won't have that information ahead of time probably um i imagine that it will have an audiobook and it will match the retail release of november but don't hold me to that <laughs> oh so the pirate series is gonna be with source books no it's uh with berkeley oh berkeley okay yeah yeah they uh they were very excited about it i've already seen the cover for the first one it's real pretty and hopefully they let me share it soon <laughs> another object cover or is it illustrated like your deal with the demon series it's, it's not it's it's different it's like i mean it's objects but it's not it's very fantasy like words forward but it feels a little bit different than anything else out there right now so i'm very curious on what the response is going to be because it's it's i gasped when i saw it and was like yes this one um <laughs> so Hopefully everybody likes it because <laughs> I do. If you could ask them to put in a step back, you know, like the series, that would be awesome too. <laughs> yeah. I actually already had the character art like created for the pre-order campaign. Cause I was like, I, I would like to see these characters. So it's for me, but like also everybody can see it too. <laughs> <laughs> do you have any advice for beginner writers dabbling in writing erotica slash sex scenes? Yeah, give yourself permission to write bad. Like, I would recommend when you're first getting started because it feels awkward. It's like, oh, like, is this even sexy? Like, I don't know what I'm doing. Um, that's how I felt. I, you don't have to feel that way. But I would give it three passes. I would write the physical acts that they are doing. And then I would go through and write, like, dialogue, like the things, like the emotional components because that's what makes sex scenes really sexy is like the emotional there. That's what makes it more than just like, Oh, they put, you know, slot, whatever into tab this. And so, um, so just getting that sketched out though, then you can expand on it and make it feel and like feel sexy and then set it aside for a bit and then go back and go one more time through it to just smooth out anything that needs to be smoothed out. Or oftentimes you'll find that it actually is much better than you realize. Um, why did you choose not to give Hook a prosthetic hand? Uh, did you worry you'd write it wrong? I was not trying to tell, like, perfectly accurate retellings. And I decided to veer more towards contemporary because I didn't really know how to explain that. I guess I could add Peter do it. But I just, it honestly kind of just never occurred to me. Um... Yeah, I if, in hindsight, maybe I would have done things differently, but it's just sort of like he, that's how he popped into my head and that's how I ran with it once he was there. Um, oh, which of your books is the closest to your heart? Uh, oh, God, it's this answer will change in a couple of years, I'm sure. But right now it is The Bastard's Bargain, just because that series was only supposed to be the uh, excuse me, the O'Malley series was only supposed to be five books. That's all they wanted. And 
I never planned on Dimitri. He sort of crashed into the scene in book two as like a walk on character who was supposed to be a villain and be gone. And then he took over and him and the youngest sister was such a perfect component of like, Oh God, it just, it wasn't supposed to happen. And I made it happen because I, I started putting their points of view scenes in book four and my editor's like, I'm going to have to buy this book. Aren't I? I'm like, yeah, you, you should. <laughs> And then readers would tell me, like, I hate him. I want him to die in a fire. And I'm like, okay, that's fair. But then the, by the end of the sixth book, they're like, wait, but he's my favorite. And, like, it just was such a vital part of my journey and, like, loving the villain was not, like, I mean, he's still the villain. He's still a terrible person at the end of that book. But not to her. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it goes to show how many people love the morality chain type of hero. Uh, with incorporating constructive feedback, do you have a sensitivity editor? How is that process for you? So I have a bunch of people have their hands on my traditional books, like from the time I turn it into when you guys read it with my um, indie books. It's only two, but one of my, my main editor is also does sensitivity reads. Like that's something that they offer and so in my dev edits, they have a lot of those types of things that they're like, hey, like just letting you know that this particular language isn't great or like you're veering towards this caricature. You should probably work on that um, and kind of educating me. I mean, it's not like their job to educate me, but it, but they do. And I deeply appreciate it because I learn a lot of stuff like that. I have blind spots for um, or just, you know, privileged spots of like as a white lady, there's stuff that I just don't want to step into and so they do a really great job of helping me figure that out um is it different <laughs> is it different with your indie stuff versus your publish traditionally published books sort of it's they both of my editors are have different marginalizations than I do. And so both of them bring different or my main editors bring different perspectives to it, but I try really hard to ensure I, I don't have as much control with my trad editors because it's whoever's on staff, whoever they work with. But I, I really want to make sure that I have a team that is diverse so that there's when there's things that I'm not aware of that it gets caught before it gets out into the world. Um, and then, you know, I learn with each book and I, try really hard not to make the same mistakes twice. <laughs> In a scenario where Zeus falls for one of the 13, um, would said person have to drop their title to become Hera or would they have both titles? Uh, they would drop their title and become Hera because they're, Zeus does not share. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I cannot imagine a scenario where one of the 13 would willingly give up their title to become Hera just because that title was stripped of such most of its power before our current Hera um and it's just it's not like compared to the others it's not one that's particularly sought after if you have another route to power do you have a character you wish you could go back write go back to rewrite over the years for any reason yeah, I mean, there are whole books that I would just dump in the trash because, <laughs> you know, like I said, I've been doing this for I, I'm coming up on 11 years next month. And like when I was in my early 20s, you, you don't know what you don't know. And I did some real silly things in books and some of them don't exist anymore. So don't look for them. They're not there. But <laughs> I've learned since then. And there's like I wrote a cop character. I would never do that now, like ever. And I'm not super happy with like in hindsight, but you know, the history of my evolution exists for people to read. And I hope that they understand that I feel differently about a lot of things than I did, you know, 10 years ago. But um, yeah, there's, there's a lot of those types of characters that I would go back and nix entirely or rewrite from the ground up. I think that's about it for all the questions, unless anyone has any last minute ones, but this is Thank great. You for hanging out. <laughs> Thanks, everyone. Thank you, Katie, for joining me today. Radiant Sin is out now, so go grab it. Um, is there anything else that you wanted to 
mention at the end here, Katie? Um, probably stuff, other stuff I should promote. I don't know. The next monster <laughs> book comes out in a month. It's called The Gargoyles Captive. It is... Um, hurt my feelings a whole lot and uh and it has a submissive monster boyfriend for you so <laughs> awesome i mean that is the perfect tagline <laughs> <laughs> yeah so i will link whatever pre-orders you have in the description thank you again everyone for all the great questions and thank you bye